Welcome back to the break room. With the ongoing writers and actors strike, the old news machine has been moving kind of slow. Mm. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about movie going in general and tell some fun stories about our relationship with film and TV. And if we have a little extra time, we'll talk fall plans. Ooh. It's not in the script, but <laughs> fall's coming upon us. And you know what? I can see this show running a little short, and I want to talk about my fall plans. <laughs> I'm doing a bit of traveling. That's season? right. It's my favorite season. I love I'm the fall. Autumn I'm going back east for the fall oh, too for a little beautiful. bit to, for a quick project and a wedding and I can't wait. And some comedy shows. That's right. I'm doing live comedy again. That's what <laughs> happens when you take it all away. <laughs> the comedy bug bites you and there's no doctor to go see for a cure. Joining me today are Corey Jandro. <laughs> And Brandon Barrick. Oh, hello. And I'm Tommy Bechtold. And you can see me live at the Carlson Theater in Rochester, New York, September 22nd. And maybe the 23rd. I haven't decided yet. Oh, the day, the, the official day after falls. Begins. Yeah, it's that's on the right. the 22nd, huh? I think fall is, a, is going to be my season of live comedy. My gift for myself for turning a certain age is to turn my life around. <laughs> By, through comedy. By re-entering the stand-up scene that ruined my life in the first place. Oh, oh. You've got to face your demons. Rodney Dangerfield didn't start doing stand-up until... Oh, I mean, I started when I was 26. I, I just oh, okay. took a long break. A long break. Long, a well, long break. Long softy. Um, so today we were going to do a little state of cinema, I guess okay. a personal state of cinema. Oh. Talk about our experiences with movies Wonderful. in general. Ever since uh, Lumiere faked a train driving into an audience... Folks everywhere have been cra going crazy. Oh, I thought you meant the, the cartoon candlestick. I was like, did I miss? Did did one of them's got a sequel. Did, did I didn't see the extended cut? Did, did, did I miss change? the part where the candlestick traumatized an audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John's fanning himself from the heat. <laughs> He's a big My fan God. of himself. Just a running commentary on John while we do the show. Yeah, yeah. John knows I can't doing. take my eyes off him. It's been a long running thing with us. Uh, okay, gentlemen, I want you to dig deep into your memory banks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our worst movie going experiences. Oh my God. You know, I actually, when we, we, you know, we obviously, we do a little prep before this. You uh -huh. know, we, a lot of the joke is that it's fast and loose, but we're, we're kind of prepped for this. And this is a really hard question for me because I love going to the movies, mm -hmm. whether the movie is good, bad, or indifferent. It is very, very <laughs> rare that a cinematic experience for me is a negative one, it, holistically. You know, there's the popcorn, there's right. the soda, there's maybe a little bit of candy. You know, in my more evolved, read overweight times, I would put the candy in the popcorn mm. and then the butter and then a little bit of soda, which made no sense structurally. Soda in the popcorn? No, so I'm, like a no soup? I'm, I'm no. exaggerating for comedic a flair. I'm going back on the road, guys. Oh, okay. Okay. But, uh, out material. but so yeah, so I read this question, worst movie going experience, and I'm like, I gotta kind of contextualize because for me, I can think of, uh, like, there's a couple different ones. I mean, are we ready to rock on this? Rock, yeah, on, right rock my world. I, I mean, and feel free to interrupt and share your own. But, like, I can think, I'm, I, I don't have a, one of the worst I ever had was seeing the movie Cruel Intentions mm. for a variety of reasons. One, I went with a girl and a guy, and me and the guy both liked the girl, and it was like, we were both on a date with her, but we mm. weren't. It was like one of those, like, very, very innocent both these guys are too nerdy to make a move, so they're just gonna sit on either side of you. Love it. Uh, you know, and there are some movies where that happens, where that turns into a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's basically like a ski vacation. But in this case, it was just us sitting in silence watching Cruel Intentions, and during the movie, <laughs> I developed flu-like symptoms. <laughs> something you would, like, I got so sick. Manifested it. I mean, it must have been coming on, but like, right. from the opening credits, I started to feel like, the flop sweat John had this morning. Mm -hmm. But like, I started to get the chills, sweating, feeling awful. Like by the end I was like, like clutching myself. I can't, re like I had a fever. I cannot remember anything about the movie. I, I've not seen it since, but like, the only thing I remembered was like, Ryan Felipe that gets hit by a car at the end. Or like saves Reese Witherspoon from a car. I don't know. There's I think he car. becomes a car. I think he does. I think he becomes Robocop. Yeah, uh, that's part of his cruel intention. But so that was an awful movie experience. I, I've also been in a movie theater where fights have broken out. Mm. That tends to ruin it. Yep. I think for me, though, the worst movie going experience that I ever went to was recent. I went to um, uh, Uncharted. Okay. And I had a, I personally had a great time at the movie. Uncharted because it was very low expectations, but a dude in the movie or in the theater, like one minute in, fell asleep. 
and started okay. loudly snoring. Oh, I was like, how did that affect you? And he was there by himself. Mm. And a couple of people came up throughout the movie and like oh. kind of gave him a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like, he'd be like, ah. And then like 30 seconds later, loudly snoring again. And it was just, you know how loud movies are. Sure. So for that to cut through. And Uncharted, not a quiet movie. No, mostly like sequences of law, like action. But you know, when there's dialogue, generally everything quiets down. So anytime anyone was talking, you just hear. <laughs> and then the noises he was making were also upset. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Anyway, anyone else want to share? Pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Those are my worst. Uh, I, I love the movie theater because I worked in one the week after my 14th birthday up until I was 20. Uh, my mom. You were allowed was, to start working? Boston Man. Oh, yeah. You could East, start working at East Coast. 14. You can work. You can, Literally you can 14 in a permit. week. I could have worked 14 Upton in a day. Sinclair's but... the jungle. Bro, I was, out, I was out on an apple farm, farmer's market. Well, was farms a... are different. That was my third job. Oh, how was it different? Been, I was working retail. I'd son. already been a paper boy. I'd already like under the table yeah, worked too. at a, a comic book store. Okay. That was my third job at 14. But I worked as a male whore. <laughs> He's hustling right, from the right. jump. But it doesn't I'm, count if you're not paying taxes, Tommy. That's true. So, we're after. Oh, okay. Now we're at. Oh, okay. Escort. Now, uh, my mom has worked in movie theaters for, I think, since she was 16. So we've been in the movie industry, yeah. exhibition industry yeah. forever. So uh, my mom, I worked with my mom at the theater. And so movie going wise, like I always have a little bit of patience, but I have a, a quick threshold of like, no, you got to leave. Like mm-hmm. I, I won't take people talking. It's not your home. It's gotten worse after COVID because sure, everyone sure. kind of thinks it's their living room. But like, I'll be the guy to go get someone in NARC. Like it's the only time I'm a NARC. <laughs> Hell yeah. Time, Hell I, yeah. I'm, having a movie experience so usually i can hang but i will say uh my two weirdest are actually press screenings and uh when i worked in a movie theater i don't like press screenings i like premieres because they celebrate the movie whereas Mm. press screenings are all about like studying them so whenever you go to a press screening someone takes out like a notepad i can't hang i hear like scratching Uh i hear judgment Uh i hear people like scoffing when Mm. i'm enjoying it like I, i remember i stood up and cheered when venom uh, in Venom, Eddie Brock gets in the lobster tank and yeah. people like groaned that I was having a good time. Yes. No, unacceptable. You're having a good time. We're watching a movie. Uh, but Take that, Scarrick Voss. Stupid people with writing with your scrutiny and your judgment. <laughs> I'm going to break down Elemental. <laughs> and I get critique is important and I get judging things is important, but you don't have to like make the whole room feel sure, stuffy sure, if you're sure. watching Venom. Sure. Uh, but when I worked at a movie theater, I was a bit of a rebellious youth when I went, oh in my youth and I was an usher. Um, so they would punish me yeah. disappearing and or drinking on the job by having me like work the, the post and rip tickets back when oh, tickets were yes. But they would literally have me then rip them all for four to six hours and then count them for two. And there was no system. They didn't double check anything. I was literally just going like matinee, adult, senior citizen. So I remember like so formative years of my life. Easy work. Just, yeah, literally to keep me yeah, under supervision so the movie theater is still sacred to me but i remember whenever i see an usher now i think of like they just scan something i would be like in the back setting aside sorting tickets for like eight hours a day five days a week for money I, so I dark times that harkens out of, my, my mom is watching this now sorry mom but uh there was a time you know i'm one of four children me and my mm-hmm. two sisters are very close in age and there's a job that i'm fairly certain was fake where my dad <laughs> gave us like a bunch of brochures to fold <laughs> oh yeah And I'm now thinking about you telling that story that he just had a bunch of like brochures from something and was like, just have him shut up and fold them in thirds or whatever. And I, mom, text in and and let me know if that's true that that job was fake. Because you're like 14 or 15, like they they make stuff up. Yeah, or we were like putting them in envelopes, like putting stuff in envelopes. It's like, there's no way this was a real But this was before reserved seating. So I remember people trying to sneak into like Lord of the Rings, the two towers for an old person and like having to kick people out, like nerds out that have been waiting like five hours, not eight. Like yeah. people lining up the night before, like Hall H to wait for movies, and you being like, "Sorry, you're not here early enough." Reserve, Sorry, reserve. I got a buzz. I thought my mom was <laughs> <laughs> so immediate. She's like, "I'm on it's Twitch." Like, and she's watching. Is- she might. Okay. Res- reserve seating was like the savior of revelatory. Yes. I think that was always. I hated the most about high school was because like in my town there wasn't anything to do but go to the movie theater. Yeah. So if like you were, you were younger, it's still in high school or something yeah. like that. Uh, it just so ma- every Friday night it was like going to the movies yeah. and then like. Saving seats for like eight other people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What a what a nightmare. You hope you, there's two of you. And watching like all movie. about yes. the Benjamins from the front row. Yes. Which obviously didn't come out when I was in high school. That's no. too old. Well, you were born in 2002. So born high school for you was really this last year. Very recently, yes. yes. Hey, uh, also, the uh the um 
the idea of reserve seating really allowed it became like kind of an amateur who's a psychopath test. Oh yeah, because you'd be like, wow, five tickets sold for this theater. Who's yeah. that? And they're all sitting clumped together, but in different rows. Like, what insane person was like, you know what? I could have total comfort, sit in a freezing cold movie theater yeah. and enjoy a movie, or I can sit next to the next closest warm body and kind of hover over them while they watch it. And I like that. I like that it, it has a, it gives you like a, a glimpse into who's an insane person. I like letting other people pick the seats and like judging them silently yeah. about oh. like where we're going. I feel that way about Southwest too, because I've been on plenty of Southwest flights that are not full. Yep. And I'm not, I mean, I'm a wide shouldered man. I mean, mm -hmm. not, not even making a weight comment about myself. Even at, if I were to lose a lot of weight, my bones of my shoulders are wide. Right. It's not fun to sit next to me on an airplane. I get that. It's not fun for me to sit next to someone. I cannot tell you how many times before the plane has even halfway filled up, two like hammered people will just plop down next to me on a Southwest <laughs> flight. And I'm like, guys, there's, cause there's... like you can't really say like, can you get the fuck out of here? Are we far enough in? Nah, it's too early to say an F. You kind of gotta, <laughs> you kind of gotta like, like be like, I mean, I have to like be like, oh guys, I think there's a lot of empty seats up there. I don't know, maybe we take a look at another room. We probably all have our own row if we want. <laughs> and they're like, hey guys, bring me on the Jack James and Dad call. <laughs> and then I have to sit with them. Boom. Mm. Yeah, I, I think they should. Then I have to drink, and that's the only reason I drink. They should do a, the layout of the airplane should be like a canoe. Make them three times as long. Yes. Yeah, it's like one long two yeah. airplane. Also, like, like why don't we slide. why don't we load and unload back to front? It just it, it makes more sense. Yeah. Like you just every play. every airline has a different procedure. It's so strange. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> My worst movie going experience. I don't know. I, at the Phantom Menace, there was like a fight that broke out oh, before yeah. where people actually threw popcorn at the screen. Oh no. Which I thought was the only thing that happened in movies. Yeah. But like it actually happened. Yeah. Uh, and then one time, as mentioned in high school, we went to see Traffic. Oh. Uh, Sodenberg joint. Mm -hmm. uh, and my friends didn't get it and they wanted to leave before the movie was over. Wow. They're like, was there's like, no traffic in this. <laughs> you fucking ass. There's not even one traffic jam. And this is pre internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm if I'm that old. Uh, and then, so I had to wait like years to see the end of that fucking movie. Oh, it's, it's not a happy it's ending. pre-streaming for pre -streaming. sure. Yeah, pre-streaming. So loaded I, cast too, Topher Grace, sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, I, was, I was gonna say, I think the worst fight I ever experienced at a movie theater was, I, I grew up in uh, like Lowell, Mass, which is, you ever seen The Fighter, Christian Bale and Murphy? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Love so that, that's my hometown, oh, yeah. so it's yes. not the, the nicest. Love uh, that and the gangs used to hide baseball bats and like crowbars and stuff behind the arcade. Like they they put weapons behind the machines. Oh, and then they'd that's come what I did with lobby. bricks during all the riots. You got to prepare like West Side Story. But I, I remember having they were to like construction sites. I remember having to confiscate like weaponry from yeah. the arcade and being like, "This is not safe for a fourteen year old." <laughs> yeah, we had an Easton metal bat that was behind Miss Pac Man. Did anyone is leave this? Is this somebody want to claim it? That is like anytime a, a Fast and the Furious screening ends, I feel like you got to let those people leave the parking lot first. Yeah, because they're well, gonna drive like me. Yeah, it's my. This is my theory on why I don't like to go to bars for uh, boxing pay-per-views. Oh, it's because people want to box. You know, I, I love watching boxing. I'm sure. not as huge in UFC because I, for some reason, someone getting kicked in the face still viscerally. I love, I respect <laughs> MMA I fighters. Respect, I respect the kid. No, I really do. I think it's, I think what they do is incredible. The, the, the grit and the toughness and like the, the training that goes into it to learn grappling and striking and all and, and submitting is all incredible. But just pure boxing is my favorite thing to watch where it's just two guys wailing on each other or two ladies and hopefully never a guy and a lady stop trying to make that a thing but uh uh when you go watch boxing at a bar it depending and it, depending on the bar it's like every single dude is like shadow Thank boxing in the parking lot and like everyone's just a little more aggro they're remembering back to like the two boxing lessons they took <laughs> on like a free group on and they're like i don't want like and and I, again not to keep drawing attention to my body but as a bigger man people like to like Try and fuck with me you because they're like, I'm gonna like beat the shit out of this guy. And yeah. the truth is, they will. They absolutely will. I'm not tough. I'm not a good fighter. There's no way. So I like people will just start like, you know, bumping into me or whatever. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So now I just pay too much money to watch boxing in the privacy of my own home. See, I want to go to Vegas for a UFC. Fight. I'm the opposite. Yeah, I want to like feel that energy and just see how long I can survive it. Well, here's the like thing: a it's a rich, it's a rich city. man's game, right? Sure, sure. Like if you go to Vegas and you're doing it all like top shelf, then it's like, yeah, I don't mind if a couple dudes with like bigger, bigger chains than me. Oh, come over and well, well, top, by the way, Jackson Chains, not a sponsor, but God, do I love these chains, and you can usually get a good deal. Uh, is this an internet site, Jackson's Chains? No, it's a jeweler. Uh, me and me and uh, Manitoba? me and my boy. Uh, what the hell is his name? He's a baseball player. He used to wear a pearl necklace. Cal Ripken. Jock Peterson. Me and Jock Peterson. 
We rock the Jackson chains. But uh, this is my birthday gift to myself last year. Maybe next oh, year, this hey, year I'll buy a bigger one. Anyway, I want to alter this question a little bit. <laughs> okay. For uh, worst movie going experience to, to movie pet peeve. Oh, movie Ooh, I like pet that. I want to pivot to a movie pet peeve because I've got a movie pet peeve that I think will surprise both. Get them. Okay. Get em. I hate people who mystery science theater, uh, pro bono mystery science theater movies, especially when they're with me as a, like when they're oh, like, okay. I'm going to try, you're, you're a comedian, let's riff, let's riff tracks let's riff. this movie, but we're in a movie theater and it's like, they want to do bits in the theater mm -hmm. And they want me to participate. It makes me uncomfortable. I do not like it. I do not like to talk during the movie. I don't mind a little like, I'm gonna whisper this one point to you because I know you don't appreciate it. And that could be it. But people that want to full on, or even I will say in a social, like we're all watching a movie together in a living room. Granted, there's a little more latitude for talking then, but like, mm -hmm. guys, we don't, it doesn't all have to be a mystery science theater experience. That's a real movie pet peeve. I feel that lately with that in blackface. <laughs> That's why you won't watch the jazz singer. That's right. Uh, I feel that lately with the Nicole Kidman AMC intro. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's only thirty no, seconds. I'm, I, no, I it's not thirty the seconds. Excitement. It's not thirty seconds. Heartbreak does it's feel better. So when long, and I'm tired like of the crowd doing call and response to yeah. it, like it's Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. It's the cards of humanity of comedy. It is not good. It's too easy. It's not original and it's done to death. I support it. I support you there, Nicole. I do, I'm on the other side of this. I do respect the fact that AMC has not changed the movies that she's watching. It's amazing. A very easy change to make. Yeah, because yeah. she's not watching anything. But it's still Two of the shots Jurassic, are gonna hurt. Yeah. It's still, I love when they it's to the still stand Jurassic it's not World her. Evolution. It's Wonder Woman 1 yep. and Creed Two? two? It's Creed Two, I think. I think. Creed is it two? Creed, Creed Two? Wow. It's either Creed One or Two. Creed Three just came out. No, it's not Creed Three. I thought it was yeah, Creed yeah. One, but it and might it's be, so yeah. funny that they're not updating them. I, I love find that, that for all of us. Funniest of the funniest. The idea that Nicole Kidman not only dresses like that to go to the movies, but watches Jurassic yes. by herself is the funniest. I thing think it me. should just be the Flash. It's just I think the whole thing should just be the Flash, and it should be all Ezra scenes. I think they need an addendum where after the movie she's clapping. Yeah. I want the clap to enter the. Which is Pelosi clap. The way she claps is art in those movies. But my, I like the Nicole Kidman. My uh, two pet peeves with movie. movies right now. One, clean up after yourself, okay? Yes. Fair Don't leave your fucking popcorn. It's insane. And your soda stuff, I mean, like all that. That Even if you go to a McDonald's, yeah. you you take your food to the trash. It tells me a lot about a person like that can't do that. It's just, it's not That and returning your cart to the cart. Yeah, it's, it's the modern your cart thing. Yeah. Like that's always the tell of someone's like humanity. If you leave food, I don't trust it. Second. Those are the type of people that I do believe would watch me bleed out of. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're calling 911. They're As like, a former usher, that is minutes. what they're doing. They've Sorry, done that to me. No, it's okay, it's okay. My second one, I'm tired of this like full restaurant experience at the movie. Yes. Unless it's a movie like that's 20 years old and we're all having a good time. Right. We've all seen it a thousand times. You want to see like a movie for the first time, don't go to a place where you there's a full menu and they're bringing food out yeah. and they're like, hey, we just need to settle up the bill. Yeah. Like well, that kind of like, bullshit. That's the nightmare of comedy clubs. It's oh, yeah. like, you yeah. know. Yeah. I'm Which, gonna yeah. I'm gonna call out iPick. Oh okay? I pick the one that's the only way to stay open. The one that's in Los Angeles. Mm. Okay. A there's couple, two. There's one in Westwood or in Pasadena. The one that's in Westwood. Okay. I went there to see uh, Venom 2, Blood of Carnage. What was it called? Just Let There Be there Carnage. Let There Be I Carnage. I like Blood of Carnage. I said there, there will be Carnage. We combined <laughs> There Will Be Blood and Let There Be Carnage every single Let way. There Be Blood. Okay. I was there to see Venom 2, Let There Be Blood Carnage. <laughs> First of all, we got there half hour early because we're like, it's a food thing, so we need to yeah, yeah. order and I don't want to be. The food didn't come out until the movie had begun. Yeah. So it's already dark. Right. Two. The table to that uh, my wife and I had to share our food on was maybe yeah. this big. Not practical. An oval, an oval. Yeah. We ordered three things. Yeah. Each plate was five times yep. the size that oh, it needed to be for the stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at no point did the server be like, hey, you ordered three things and they're not gonna fit on this yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. table. No, he's point like, yeah, D or wherever I'm at at this point. All the money. I ordered like a ch chicken fingers or something that you could dip in. The movie has now begun. I can't see. There's four sauces that come with it. I can't see what's in. You the could be sauce you could thing. be dipping into you could be dipping into blood. Yeah, I could be dipping <laughs> into blood, blood carnage. Blood. <laughs> Let there be blood carnage. It's, also, it's an active yeah, blood bank yeah, yeah, there, it's there as well. So there's lots of fluid. The Westwood one's very bumpy. And then it's just like I'm sp everything's everywhere. It's spilling. It's clanking. Ching, bang, 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 yeah. bang, ching, ching. It's just like too know. much noise. <laughs> too much noise. I didn't like it. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with what, that. What's up? <laughs> 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 I, I'm going to go with my pet peeve being uh, 
people on a date having full volume conversations. Yeah, which oh, is a new thing. that's that's not like it's I not even mystery science. They're not even talking about the movie. No, They're just no. talking. And anyone that takes their phone out for more than a like, oh, I, I this is an emergency. Yeah, like people sure. full on texting and having conversations. No. Like I think there should be a three strikes you're banned from the theater. Room. Absolutely. I think they're like as in former usher. I would love to like have a list. If you can be banned from a bar, you should be able to be banned from the theater. Ooh. I want Trank Like Bugs. a no-fly list. Power. You want a yeah. no-theater A no-AMC list. list. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. get out. If you can, if you can do, yeah, if you can dodge a wrench, you can be banned from a theater. <laughs> I think it's only fair. I think, I think a banned list from a theater. I'd love, because you get scanned in. I would like, like that. You have to show your ID. Yeah. Be yeah, rid of them because I'd go to the movies more in like regular hours. I go weird times because I can't stand the public. Yeah, yeah. And this has been act. three crusty old men yeah, talking in the, the movies. movies. But let's go back, mm. way back. Okay, back into time. Oh. oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. What movie did you watch when you were way too young? And boy, do I have like a hundred. Yeah, of yeah. Them. Most of mine were not in the theater. Yeah, because uh, you know. Yeah. I, at a the when you go to the movies, it's a little more controlled environment. Yeah. Uh, way too young. Uh, it's like a mix of Terminator Two. Oh yeah, nice. The image of the uh, John Connor's foster mother having the oh baby. my god, no. yes, same destroyed me. Similar memory, nightmares similar forever. memory. Yep. Uh, Universal Soldier. It was probably the same night I saw Terminator yeah, yeah, Two. Yeah, yeah. A Jean Claude Van Damme joint. Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, that type of early '90s gore yeah. too was like. It was so much hamburger meat. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. they yeah. they had mastered the like uh, liquid latex. We can split your throat right, right, open right. or split your right. chest cavity open. Yeah. Thank God it wasn't the thing because Ooh. even now the thing haunts me. Uh, but yeah. I did see James Cameron The Abyss. Ooh, way too young. Yeah, uh, that, that movie's also four hours long. So four right. hours long and just like really made me fearful that I was gonna drown. Yeah, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just like so much drowning in the yeah. movie oh, yeah. and just like last gaps of air yeah. like. Yeah. Scared me. I, I, I was a big uh, Jurassic Park kid way Hell too yeah. young. Uh, read read the book like as one of my first I books. I did. Like, <laughs> but for some reason, Jurassic Park 1 didn't scare me. Mm. I don't know why. Jurassic yeah. Park 2, The Lost World, terrified me. I think it's because the mm. raptors were smart. So I remember they're specifically- smart. And the T-Rex like purposely bites his legs. Oh, there's so much in the malice. Nest so that the, the babies can eat them. <sighs> There's like That's a whole, like, like, and I felt yeah, as a yeah. kid they were coming for me because in the first one they were like wild animals. In the second sure, one they were sure. like malicious. So I remember uh, building a fort to protect myself mm. but still watching it through the fort. And I was like seven. I remember specifically like having the fort as protection, but then my parents came home and I thought they were raptors. So I hid uh, from my parent <laughs> raptors for like hours and they couldn't convince me they weren't raptors that could talk because the Allen scene. Mm. So uh, no, that was the third okay. one. The third one also scared me because then I thought they could talk. I had a whole thing with dress. Allen. Messed me up, man. Allen. Allen. Yeah, my my mom had. I was very hyped for Jurassic Park, as most young kids were, having grown up like loving dinosaurs, uh, and I was so hyped for it. And my mom was like, "Okay, well, I have to go see it first to make sure it's okay for you to see." I was like, "Fair enough." She comes back, and I think I was asleep, and she like wakes me up, and she's like, "Brandon, it. it was so good. It was so good." I was like, "What are you talking about? I want to see it now." She's like, "You can't go now, but it's so good." There's these, these dinosaurs and they're like kangaroos. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> she was talking about the raptors. But I was like, to she me was too. comparing them to kangaroos. I was like, that's not a fucking dinosaur. I know what you're talking about. Oh, the ruse, The Brandon. ruse, the ruse. The ruse. The ruse. Yeah. What uh, did you see too? I mean, certainly, you know, we're of a similar age point in 2002. That's but, right. Uh, I, uh, Avatar, the last era. So, so my parents, I think, and I mean this genuinely, they gave me a real gift as a kid where they were, they were not strict parents, but one thing they did is they really were careful about what we watched at like up until like 13 or 14. Like they were like, they legit were like, oh, it might be funny if he watches Terminator 2 when he's 10, but it's probably more traumatic than, yeah. but in my Aunt Monica's house, oh, yeah. <laughs> there were no rules. Uh-oh. So I got all my naughty movies watching okay. in there, mm -hmm. whether I wanted to or not. Yeah. Watched Evil Dead by accident oh, there. Oh, no. By Walk, accident. Walked in the room. She was watching Evil Dead. I was too afraid to leave the room. Mm. So I was like, I'd rather sit here next to her on the couch and watch the movie like this than go back out into the hallway where, for sure, someone who's evil and dead mm -hmm. will kill me. But then Terminator 2, same exact thing. Uh, many, many, many bad 80s and 90s action movies with people getting arms torn sure, off sure. and eaten alive. Uh, I can for sure remember those. Uh, Evil Dead stands out to me as one that I watched way too young. And then the the movie that I went to in theaters, I wasn't even too young. It was just the amount of lying that we did to go to it because it was rated <laughs> R. 
uh -huh. was uh, Varsity Blues. Oh, hell yeah. I remember just lying my ass off about what the movie was about. I played football. My friend Scott Fouth did not play football, but like played sports. You're and lying to your parents about it? Lying to my parents okay. to go to the movie. It was me and like four other dudes. Like we like all got our parents to like agree to let us go. And that was when there was like kind of a little bit of like, you can't see an R-rated movie under 17. Sure. There might be some policing of that. And I don't know, we got in and we went and watched the movie and it was everything we wanted it to be. <laughs> There's so much just great. Great, great, great scenes in there. Uh, and all, mostly football based. Sure, sure. I don't even remember if there were women in the movies. I mean, Allie Larder had a few moments in there, I'm sure. And is it Amy Smart Amy in Amy Smart movie? is very much in the much whipped in cream the bikini or whatever? That's Allie Larder. That's Allie Larder. I, not that I know. Okay. Not that I know. There's also several other women. There's just some gals hanging out trying to get with Scott Kahn sure, and the rest sure. of the gang. <laughs> Listen, everybody uh, had a good time, but I just remember it felt so wrong, but it felt so right. An early memeable movie, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want, want your, your life, life, daddy. I don't want your life. <laughs> I saw American Pie in theaters. I think that was too young. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I saw that too young. I saw Blink, which is this terrifying. I've never seen it since because it scarred me to such a level. It's like a thriller with Madeline Stowe where mm. someone gets killed and she's blind and they replace her eyes with the killer's eyes. So she just sees murder. Oh, and I was like oh, maybe cute. five. That's like cool. it really because I'd close my eyes to blink and I was scared to blink. So I didn't sleep oh. for a while because I was scared to close my eyes that I'd see murders. Oh, uh, okay. that, that was really set oh, me apart. That, this, not that this has anything to do with that, but just being five. I remember my dad brought home a river runs through it <laughs> for us to watch on New Year's <laughs> Eve. And that is just a sad, sad, sad movie. So long. And we watched as a family. Like I was probably like eight. My sister was nine, my yeah. sister was seven, like my, my brother was two. My parents were still married, so you know things that were- That was like, we saw, I seen Radio Flyer yeah. multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Which is about like a young- Abused, abused child, right? Like, a bro like two brothers yeah. and they have a stepdad who's like abusive or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they build an airplane and die. I yeah. assume they die. Like yeah. One of them dies, I don't know. Yeah. He like flies off and never comes back. He died. Yeah. Uh, and like Tom Hanks like bookends the movie as like the adult mm -hmm. grown up version of Elijah Wood, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know why as a kid, I watched that multiple times. It's yeah. very those formative movie. movies that like really shaped you. I was, I, I was, wonder if Barbie will be that for some kids. They're like, <laughs> oh, I went to a movie when I was three and nobody had genitals. <laughs> I, I remember being scarred by the trailer for a Sally Field movie called Eye for an Eye. Mm. Sally Field and Keith Sutherland, where I believe Sally Field calls uh, to check in on her daughter is at home alone, mm. uh, and a, a Kiefer something like shows up and kills her while Sally Field is on the phone and can hear her like crying Whoa. for help or whatever. Just the trailer for <laughs> fucked me. Mom, up. you're not gonna and believe this. About the actor Kiefer Sutherland is in my house right now. David and he's from the Lost kill Boys me. is currently in my home. Kiefer Sutherland, son of Donald Sutherland, <laughs> he's in the house. I'm gonna kill you. John, and I'm drunk. John, if we have any good uh, people in the chat shouting out their movies, let us know. We've got a bunch. You want to hear some? Yeah, hear, give, hit me uh, up. I want to hear a lot. Yeah. I would like to. Hit me up. Some some people, Stephen King's Cujo. Oh, yes. Oh, oh I Pet Cemetery. I saw that oh. way too young. The Shining yeah. messed me up. Yeah. Oh, um, I read Jaws as a little boy. That, like, this, I read Jaws in like fourth we're grade. We're not talking about books. And I got it, but that books made me. For nerds. But I got into like Peter Benchley. His books are so horny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christian yeah. Unpronounceable Brody found- Brody's wife in Jaws? She can't stop <laughs> one. What'd Chris you say? Christian Unpronounceable found his dad's VHS porn stash. Oh, God. Oh, come on, well, Christian. Well, you know. That's uh, not the movie theater. Wait, was that the name of one of the movies? Come on, Christian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bunch of people saying The Evil Dead was one of their- Oh, yeah. 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 I saw Blade yeah. at just the right age. I think yeah. I think seeing Blade at like 10, oh, 11 yeah, yeah. was yeah. awesome. You know when you hit that you're like sweet so, spot. Yeah, we yeah. Were like, this is the coolest this can be. I it's remember still the coolest movie. The first movie I got to see at night in like a theater, where yeah. I was like, oh, I'm grown up now. Dick Tracy, dude. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It fucking slaps. Stop. It That's slaps. Moment. My if you have not watched Dick Tracy, watch Dick Tracy. At night. It's great. It's a fever dream. Warren Beatty's out of his mind. He's still out of his mind. Yeah. Uh, he still owns the character and won't let it die. He keeps doing weird little things for AMC every 10 years. Uh, We're gonna do some vignettes. I'm Dick Tracy. It's still mine. It's so I'm Dick Tracy. He's 89, I think. Uh, he's, he's old. He's um, old. Also, uh, I just remembered a, a too young to see a movie thing that is very funny. 
and, and my dad's taken a real beating on the show today. <laughs> and, and, and in this case, this is something he did not, he, he did out of yeah, love. Yeah. I was Ghostbusters freak. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing is, I watched the cartoon, uh -huh. and I watched the first movie, which has a lot of references that'll go over sure, a young sure, boy's sure. head. And also, fast forwarded and rewinded when it got too scary, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my dad took me to like the third run movie theater. Like this movie's been out for a year and a half. It was called The Wearing in Rochester, New York, if anybody ever remembers that place. Took me to see Ghostbusters 2 in theaters. And here's the thing, you can't fast forward no. movies in the theater. I fucking ran out of that theater like 10 times. He had to like basically chase a little chubby five-year-old, like his nightmare. And then we got like movie finished, we get in the parking lot and I just reared back and socked him in the stomach Ooh. as hard as I could. <laughs> like, which I'm sure didn't hurt, but I mean, emotionally can't feel good. When you're like my boy, the oldest boy, <laughs> couldn't laugh, couldn't hang in Ghostbusters too. And to this day, every time we watch that movie together, a fight breaks out. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. That's okay. Guys, give me your favorite movie of all time. You gotta pick one. <laughs> you gotta pick one. This is a dumb question. I've got two that are tied for first. I know it says one, but they're literally tied. It I guess, I don't know, it's guys. Do you want to defy have, John? Do you ever want to be two? on the show again? Yeah, one. I got, okay, I'll pick one. Let it's, me, let it's, me a, it's an ever-changing metric that constantly flows like yeah, a river of time. But where are you at right now? Today. Where are you today. at right now? Okay, today. I got one today, and later on in the show, I'll mention the other one because I feel disrespectful to the other one. But right now in this moment, uh, and because it has the worst PR ever, and because it's liked by all the worst people, I love it so specifically. I think Fight Club is one of the best movies. Okay. And I thought you were going to say Sound movie. of Freedom. Let's FaceTime my mom real quick. Let's uh, we'll check in. Back, <laughs> put her in. Does she like Fight Club? We're going to find out. I'm going to defend it in a moment after this. Mom, going well. you're, being, you're on the air. Oh boy. Mom, you didn't answer my text soon enough. You remember when dad made us fold brochures when we were little? Remember? Yes. Was that a fake Was that a fake job to keep us busy or was that a real task that he needed done? Um, I think, well, it was to drum up business, so I think he really needed it. That's marketing. That's so we job. actually were real working job. at, we were doing child labor because we were talking about jobs we did as kids and I was like, I'm pretty sure that was a fake job my dad made up to like keep us busy. Well, I don't know. He, he did probably make it up in the way that he probably could have gotten somebody else to do it. Oh, but, yeah. But he, cho but he chose his children. Free labor instead. is free labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I don't think it was free labor. I'm sure it took an emotional toll out of him. But yeah. Uh, yeah. all right. Thank you. That's all. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Love you so much. Love you so much. Okay. Bye. bye. Right. Sorry, so we got an answer there. So Fight Club, yeah. Fight Club and brochure jobs. I think Fight Club is something that I rewatch uh, like every five or 10 years and find something new in it. I really mm -hmm. love its commentary on so many things, including like late stage capitalism, philosophy, masculinity. It's one of those movies that as you mature and change gets better and better. And I remember distinctly loving Jack mm -hmm. Uh, as a lesser character and thinking Tyler Durden is the coolest guy ever and then hitting sure. a certain point where I was like, oh, Tyler's the antagonist in this film. Um, and I just love that that movie changes as you watch it and different characters become important. And it's also one of the funniest movies ever made. Perfectly shot, perfectly written, perfectly edited. It's a perfect movie. To movie. me, Meatloaf is the hero. Oh, Ooh, important. Oh, okay. His name is Robert Paulson. He had bitch tits. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say in the movie. Yeah. That's what they, they say, say in the movie. They say in the movie. Oh, my mom tuned off after the FaceTime call. <laughs> It's that's a that's a classic like yeah the wrong people the like wrong people the talk wrong, about it loudly yeah, yeah and they don't the realize that reasons. they're the, the wrong Bro, they don't realize Tyler Durden's an antagonist don't you understand my character. truck is wrapped in Punisher logo <laughs> <laughs> I am justice well my friends and I recently rewatched uh, Falling Down which has Ooh. kind of the same oh, thing like yes. the wrong people like love that movie for the wrong we reasons. loved that movie when I was like a teenager me and my friends for whatever we thought Michael Douglas yeah. We just thought his character portrayal was so funny. Like another movie, this should only cost eighty yeah. cents. Like just his like nickel and dime. Or like yeah, yeah. there is some pretty quotable. Like the main character in that movie also doesn't have a name. Yeah, yeah. they call him like Delta or something yeah. like that. Or the movie's great. I don't know. Very interesting movie. A very hot movie. Yeah, yeah. where you where it feels hot. I mean, yeah. that's part of the plot yeah. is that he's hot and it's yeah. sweaty. Good in to Los watch Angeles. today, Los Angeles. But like a hot movie, like uh, a Time to Kill. Another hot, sweaty yeah. movie. Mm. Ooh, yes, she deserved to die. He deserved to die. <laughs> yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. Oh, I mean. I went through every yeah. potential combination. You did. You did. I mean, my favorite movie is probably Jurassic Park. Mm. It really holds up. We watched it, re watched it recently. Uh, it's, it's very good still. <sighs> still love it. I mean, it still just like hits that sweet spot uh, in my soul. I'm gonna stay in a movie not a lot of people have seen. Uh, I'm gonna Dick sneak Trace. it in there. I'm adding it in, John. See, he gets two. 
I do whatever I want. All right. uh, this is a movie that I don't know why, again, in the vein of like, we rented this movie all the time and I don't know why we liked it so much. Mm. You know, like uh, like Radio Flyer or mm. Death Becomes Her, which we watched as a kid like way too much. I don't know why. Uh, there's a little Robert Downey Jr. movie. Mm. That less also, than zero. Not less than zero. <laughs> Great movie though. Great book. Uh, a uh, little Robert Downey Jr. movie that also has Charles Grodin. Ooh. It's got uh, Tom Sizemore in Whoa. it. Uh, 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 and a bunch of other people. Um, it's called Heart and Souls. Oh, yes. It's an insane yes. movie. That is like weirdly sci-fi. Yes. Oh, I love comedy, that movie. Where, long story short, Robert Downey Jr. has like four ghosts attached to him who've like fallen out of his whole life. They all got a bus accident, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a, a, a huge convoluted plot that makes no sense. And it opens with this insane establishing shot that's done with miniatures of San Francisco. Sounds I don't know. But like, it's so crazy and all over the place. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. gives a, a great performance where at some point he's inhabited by each of the ghosts. So he has to act mm. them out. Um, just incredible stuff. Hell yeah. Incredible it's a, stuff. That is a very fun movie. It's a yeah. weird movie. The favorite movie of all time is so see. interesting because it's like, you know, you go through eras of your life and there's movies that I have such attachments to because there are movies that like my family loved to rent over and over again. We used to like, I mean, do you remember that weird, not weird, funny, but like clearly now looking back made by a bunch of men who had left their families <laughs> and it was called Bye Bye Love and it was all about single dads yes. that were like trying to, but like it is a sweet movie and the relationships are very adorable. And I, I think it's Rob Reiner directed it and has the very funny payoff that Rob Reiner is like the relationship expert. Mm -hmm. And in the end, he's like getting a, he's a radio what DJ. What a run, Rob Reiner. And in the end, he's getting a divorce. Like he's like, it's like the whole thing is him. Like, like he's being like, they, I think they end up going into his radio show and like berating him. And he's like, I, I can't go. I got to go to my like divorce mediation or I can't talk right now. It's very funny. I love that movie because of, uh, you know, the fam like the watching of my family and laughing and enjoying it. It's not my favorite movie. So that was a bit of a cop out. My favorite movie is Monster Squad. Oh, okay. Wolfman's got nards. Okay. It's got this creature from the Black Lagoon, <laughs> a problematic uh, villain these days, the mummy. It's got Frankenstein, <laughs> it's got Dracula, and it's got the Wolfman. Is it a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination? No. Is it 92 minutes of fun that you can- That's a fun one. And it's got, you know, it's just- Does it have both the Corys? Or that, just one Cory? I think it only has eight. I don't, does it have any Corys? Does it have a Corys? I don't think- I don't remember I don't this movie. Either, no. You've never seen Monster Squad, it's a great movie. Not since I was- It's uh, all very universal. That's Monsters. why definitely my favorite That's kid great. movie. Right. My favorite movie as an adult might be Dunkirk. I don't know, I love Dunkirk. Dunkirk? Dunkirk was awesome. Wow, that was a pull. That's a Did pull. not expect the Dunkirk I love Dunkirk. Dunkirk. That's Dunkirk. not even my favorite Nolan. No. Yeah, that's fine. I'm glad you Top like Top three it. favorite Nolan. I love uh, Dunkirk. My second, my tied for first was Do The it. Matrix. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I think it's so, it changed cinema. It changed like allowing philosophy to integrate yeah. in your movies. It changed how we shot film. It changed how much density we allowed to be in an action okay, blockbuster. Right. Like that movie is about so much, it's about Plato. It's about so many metaphors for a more modern existence. And it's able to reintegrate the way we use CGI in a more practical way. Like The Matrix holds up much like Jurassic Park holds yes. up. Cause it used things seamlessly. And I think it, prepared us in some ways for the 21st century and it was very prophetic. I want to change I my I love answer. the Matrix. <laughs> love Guru. Love Guru is the win. <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle. I want to uh, talk. That's Master of Disguise. Oh shit. Master of Disguise doesn't have any racial overtones or, or someone playing a race. Mike Myers, Love Guru, clearly love, cinema. Love but Guru like, featuring Bruce, Justin kiss, kiss Timberlake as Guy Lecoq. Lethal Weapon's up there. Oh yeah, Lethal Weapon's so good. Uh, uh, I want to talk more movies. about the Matrix, but first, I also want to let you know that right now at nerdriot.shop, you can get a great t-shirt inspired by the Ahsoka series, That's like this right. one I'm wearing right now, that features Ahsoka and her former master. Or maybe you remember another series that featured Ahsoka, The Mandalorian, where this shirt is. Oh, that was, that's a Mandalorian shirt? Yeah, it yeah. is. You, if you may notice the Beskar and the, and the right. There's, There's also a, a line of The character like, from Boston, Bill Burr, who's yes. from this city, which should be a planet in, in Star Wars, Planet Boston. Oh, man. There's Bill also Burr. a line Nick's of, Mayfield. of uh, Star Wars inspired sports shirts. And guys, it, we are in it. College football season kicked off on Saturday, your boy, Absolutely slaughtered a bet picking Notre Dame with the points. That's Notre Dame, favorite. Notre Dame was a was a twenty six point favorite, and I smashed it just like you smash things during a riot, a nerd riot. You can also get this shirt, a ringer tee. I like I like the the seam here that like yeah yeah that's the football like, style. These uh, are yeah, ringer tees. They're called that's ringer tees. We also uh, have baseball like tees, three quarter length sleeve baseball oh. tees, which is jammed. 
Oh, like you jammed yourself up? Jammed up. Is that a baseball team? Oh, there it is. Baseball tea. Stop eating so much cheese, buddy. Ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> that's a two wide. That's a, this is actually this is a limited this is a curse. This is a cursed item. Like they fixed the print. Don't worry, folks. Yeah. Uh, you can check out these awesome shirts. And you know what? Maybe we'll give the cursed item away one of these days. Maybe, yes. maybe we'll do a giveaway. Who wouldn't want a cursed item? Who wants a Kashyyyk with two Ys? You know the only other person wearing a Kashyyyk with two Ys shirt? Your boy in the That's streets. Right. I'm a freaking Kashyyyk. <laughs> It's true. Check out all that inspired uh, merch yeah. over at Nerd So Riot. cause a riot Shop. in your town. Yeah, do at, that. At nerdriot.shop. Um, Corey, you mentioned The Matrix. Mm. Uh, another question John cooked up for us was what was your most hyped movie that ultimately ended up being a letdown? Oh. And for me, personally, that's The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, I think over time, you know, the, we view the Matrix series as we view it, say what you want. But that was a great example for me of like being, oh man, I love the Matrix mm. when it came out in theaters uh, a year before I was born and two years before I was born. And I made, I saw that movie in theaters three times and each time like brought someone else. Like you literally have yeah. to see this movie. You know, that's like a pre kind of internet movie culture that's like hyping things up. They had played a trailer during like the Super Bowl. That was how most people had heard about it, but no one really oh, understood yeah. what it was. They had, yeah. they had a website, which was like a big yeah. deal. Uh, and, I, and, you know, I spent the next few years being like, I can't wait for this like sequel. It's going to be awesome. And then it was just like, oh, oh, where it was like, once you start explaining the mystery, it was like less fun. For yeah, me. that was a big letdown for me. The I, Matrix Reloaded. I was kind of like, oh, this was not what I was expecting. I think okay, I view it, I view the, the trilogy quadrilogy now differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but that was that was one of my big letdowns. It's not that it's like a horrible movie. I was just like, I built myself up to expect something that wasn't capable of yeah. being produced. I, mine's gonna be polarizing and I, it's not, I, I, I realize I'm probably wrong. I think a lot of my issues with this movie have to do with my own emotional maturity. And I'm willing to admit that. How to lose a guy in 10 days. <laughs> Heartbreak. The movie is free solo. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I, I, I very much enjoyed all of the music and sequences in this movie, but I hated the story and, and, uh, and plot of La La Land. Oh, uh, I thought you were gonna say Dunkirk. No, I could not connect to La La Land and the, so I, I, I guess as a selfish person, I felt I was judged by how uh, selfish both of, uh, I think it was just too hard for me to watch a movie about two career driven people that won't make it work with each other because they need to <laughs> honor their own personal needs. Whereas I feel you should always give up your own individuality in service of another person. <laughs> that being said, opening scene is a banger. Banger. City of Stars is a banger. Banger. There, I mean, I, I, all, of it, all of those sequences are great. I enjoyed watching the movie. I think by the time I got to it, it had been so hyped I, up yeah, yeah, as yeah. this experience that you will never see anything like it. And I watched it and I'm like, these guys are kind of assholes. But like the movie's good, but it just was so, it was so hyped up that it was a letdown for me. And I understand that that movie is very special and important to people and I do not diminish it as a great movie. I just think Tommy B is not like other guys. <laughs> Uh, I think The Matrix is a really fair one. Uh, I'm gonna go with The Matrix, uh, but I also think uh, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I'm just gonna tangent out of loving La La Land into that four star film for me. Uh, I'm gonna go with, uh, I was really young and I think that I didn't understand uh, directors changing over at the time. So mm. I didn't quite get the nuance of like movie making when I saw X-Men 3. Oh, sure. And I remember loving X-Men 1 and 2 mm. and like was just being so excited for 3 because I was like the right age to be really hype and read yeah. every article. It's like the first time I got like Entertainment Weekly because X-Men 3. Sure. And then like Ben Foster has always been one of my favorite actors. Yeah, and he's playing oh, Angel. me too. I remember being hyped like, about for, that. Like, five minutes. Yeah. And the movie itself is they like, talk more about him than he is in the movie. Yeah, he's mentioned a lot and he just shows up and he isn't even Angel. He's like, yeah. but anyway, the movie itself, I hear you. the third act is such a mess of cliches and I was the right age to know it wasn't good, but to not know why it wasn't Hell good. Right. And that actually made it worse. And then X-Men 2 ends on the Phoenix shot. And I love the Phoenix saga yeah. from not just the comics, but also the animated series. So X-Men 3 was like this culmination of like, they're gonna do it. They're gonna be like the best. And then it just was not. X-Men 3 is- That's the totally one fair. No, I, 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 I don't rewatch it now and watch it yeah. like with a full rewatch. I just can't go back. There's a lot of better reasons to not like Brett Ratner, but that's a, a <laughs> I don't know. Reason. I think what he did to X-Men. I honestly think Brian Singer and Brett Ratner, their biggest crimes are those films. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Listen, I've been to their parties. Stop. Get me out of the shot when jets. he's talking about this. Put me back up. Give me no. the two shot with me no. and Brandon. Brandon and I have been in hot tubs with Brian. Uh, no, we, we no. haven't. Yeah, We're not as, pretty enough as a him. big X-Men stand, man. That was rough. 
X Men Three. Woo, doggy. Yeah. Did he like? He never even showed like fire in that. Like no. purposely, no. he was like, "I'm not doing your Phoenix Saga nerds." And yeah. it's like, "You son of a bitch!" And like, you Cyclops, son of a bitch. Cyclops is killed off screen because yeah. he's doing Brian Singer Superman yeah. movie. Yeah. Well, you get to see a cool shot of his sunglasses just floating. Just yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Hope you had a good time. That movie <laughs> Sorry, and the Juggernauts not... quoting memes instead of being awesome. Yeah. Oh, the Juggernaut outfit. And I love Vinny Jones. Was he Vinny Jones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was Man. all practical, which should be cool, yeah. but they didn't yeah. make the it. Work. If you need to watch Vinny Jones, just watch Euro Trip and watch the yes. Manchester United Hooligans. <laughs> Scotty <laughs> doesn't know Snatch and Euro Trip back to back. Have a good yeah. Vinny Jones day. Yeah, have a Vinny Jones weekend. Uh, is it Friday yet? Uh, sure. It's always Friday somewhere. Ooh, but next week is a three day weekend. And that's why I want to talk fall with you guys. Oh, it's not fall yet. Let's get some fall it's plans fall out yet. there. Brandon, you got big fall plans? You and your wife like to go to a lot of concerts. Uh, I don't know if we have any concerts. No concerts that. on the docket? I don't I'd love to so. go to a show with you guys sometime. We went to the uh, the Empire Strips back together. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was a lot of fun. Show. That, that was a great fun. show. I, I want them to come back again because that guy was very accommodating to us. I want yeah. him to continue to accommodate us. They got, yeah, I got a, lovely, got a lovely shirt that I'm embarrassed to wear anywhere around. I have a few of them because they gave me they kept giving me more because I bought their ex incredibly expensive magazine. Mm -hmm. They're like, have some more shirts. I mean, I think they were at nearing the end of their run when mm -hmm. we went. Mm -hmm. uh, That's such a good show. If you, if you so see the Empire fun. Strips back at a theater near you, like, commit well, to it, make a well choice. Well worth it. And it's um, not like a full strip thing. You guys will be okay. It's a burlesque. You're we, safe. We've talked a lot about movies today, what yeah. we like, what we don't like, our pet peeves, our greatest achievements. How do you guys feel about the industry as a whole? You know, as we're coming out of all of this, uh, I say all of this, like, you know, uh, ending pandemic restrictions, not the end of a pandemic. It will always be here, folks. Uh, but as movie theaters try and come back from what they went through, do you think there is a future for them? Are yes. they heading in the right direction? Unequivocally. I think this year has been a very interesting year because we've seen the highest of highs and lowest mm -hmm. of lows, right? Mm -hmm. We have seen we have seen people uh, unite and celebrate around films like Oppenheimer and Barbie. We have seen people, for whatever reason, patently reject films that they feel like there's, that they're like, why are, why are we still getting fed this? Right. You know, these are movies that we're no longer like, whatever. We're, we're kind of seeing a waning in the uh, cinematic universe a little bit. I mean, not. I think it's just more of an, an ebb than it is anything else. I think it'll come back. But it's been, I think if anything, it proved that it's an ecosystem this year, right? Like you can still have giant successes. Look at the top 10 films this year that came out. There are 10 films that have made over $460 million in the box office. That's a lot of movies right. making, making the amounts of money that 10 years ago, maybe two movies would make, mm. maybe one movie would make. So I think, yes, I think that there's still room for, I think the theatrical experience is one that needs to evolve with the tech, with the uh, things like watching things in 4D, watching them in IMAX, watching them with like in Dolby, those experiences become more and more important. They need to make more theaters like that. They also need to, I think, continue to evolve the, the seating structures and the reserve seating and whether or not rec full recliners are really, you need a full recliner because that just, it eliminates so much space in theaters, but also they have the ones that can kind of just like, they're almost like airplane seats without inconveniencing someone behind you. Maybe those are enough. I, but for me, I think, I think that with the labor movements in tangent, in, in tandem with, I'm doing a tangent, in tandem with the the theaters kind of having a comeback. Once these labor uh, movements are resolved, I think it's going to be a big push back into theatrical because the the studios are going to want to get their money's worth for the concessions they're going to have to make and should make, and the actors and and and, uh, and 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 directors and writers are going to want their movies shown theatrically mm -hmm. so that they can achieve the full potential of their salaries with bonuses. So I think yes, I think it's a robust landscape as long as we're all cool with you know maybe not seeing as many AI written Netflix animated children shows. <laughs> like if we're good with that. I tangent over. completely agree with everything you said. I think it's the most important thing to me is the movie theater. Like I honestly would say that if I could say anything was safe in the world other than my friends and family, it'd be the theater industry because it's the thing that allows 
people to have agnostic church. Like I'm not religious, but I go to the theater to have that shared communal experience. And I think without the community element of it, like I love the quality of sight and sound. I love the fact that the artists are showing their art in the biggest way, but it's the element that is sharing art with people around you that you don't know and that you do know. I don't want just my friends in my house to watch a movie. I want right. that. What does everyone else think of this? I love having conversations in the lobby. I love the event of it. I love going and parking, going into the theater. I think that streaming was very, very detrimental to the entire movie movie theater industry. I think the idea of everyone having an $8 streaming service and having a $200 million movie drop on it was asinine and absurd. Yeah. I think especially like with five people sharing it, now you're talking $2 each. It's right. such an absurd idea that anyone could make any money except the people that kick off those streaming services and then bail in three years with all their bonuses. It is insane that CEOs can make all this money and then bail once it right. implodes, that people can buy these services, cause everyone underneath to literally lose their jobs, including the artists that made this stuff, that the people in the suits have no idea how to be creative to start with. They just know how to buy stuff like stock. It's gross that we're losing the actual shared community experience because all humanity has is art. Like the only thing that keeps us from being machines is using our emotions to make something that connects us to other humans. So losing that to machines is the thing we've made movies about for 30 years and losing the theater experience puts us one step closer to that. So I think we need to find a way to get rid of people not acting appropriately in public. I think there is a, a lesson to be learned about how you should be in public. You should be able to enjoy it and have fun, but there is a line in the sand. And I think that much like Napster turned things into Spotify and artists in the music industry had to pivot to concerts. I think movie theaters are what concerts are for music now. If streaming is gonna steal the soul of so many things like Spotify does, we need to let people have the movie theater. We need to do it right for people. Hell yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think exactly, I, I couldn't, have, couldn't have said it better myself. I think that, that that's exactly right. And I also think on top of that, streaming was presented disingenuously to consumers as a thing of like, your stuff when it comes off theaters will be available the same way you, it was presented to us more like a blockbuster video, True. right? Like it was like, this will be where the, when the movie leaves theaters, it lives in a way that you can watch it. And and this is when your shows are done with their original runs on, on network, this is a place where you can watch it. Now it has clearly evolved into, this is where we can shove tax write-offs or we can shove stuff out. And exactly as you said, we'll have already made our money for it. And what we've learned is it's not like a video rental place unless the video rental place had a policy of taking things away from you that had just come out and being like, sorry, you can't rent this movie that just came out two weeks ago because we're burying it and we're scorching, we're erasing it from, from the, from the existence database. so that we can write it off as a tax write-off. We're not gonna have Demolition Man in Blockbuster anymore because we've used all of our Taco Bell coupons and now there'll be no Demolition Man. Yeah. Hope you got it in the first two weeks. I think the, 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 the lie that we were fed by streaming as you perfectly put, I'm just piggybacking on it. It just didn't come true. And now the return to the theater is the way you resolve that. And I love that the synchronicity of Top Gun was the first movie to make. So it used to be VHSs were so expensive, they couldn't really be bought because you'd have to like make up for the movie theater's loss of money. So VHSs were like $100. Top Gun made it so the consumer could get a lot of that movie and they were a more commonly spread. The VHS that changed things was Top Gun. I love that Top Gun was in turn that got people back in the theater. I think it's beautiful synchronicity. We need to now figure out the middle ground. So when a show ends its run, had the DVD come out and make its money, but the residuals that go from that DVD being sold met the artists. With streaming not revealing their numbers, you don't have the opportunity for anyone that actually created anything to have any actual plausible deniability of that money. So streaming is screwing over people in so many different ways, and it's not fair to anyone except the people running away with money. Yeah. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Brandon. Yeah. Big studio, Brandon. I'm big studio, Brandon. <laughs> uh, I'm a big advocate too of, yeah, owning the physical media. Yes. If you yeah. like a movie, yeah. You want to watch it again, yeah. you know, don't rely on streaming to do that. Yeah. Uh, my favorite movies now, I buy like the 4K Me too. Yeah, same. disc because, you know, it, it gets passed around on streaming, you never know. And even if it says like it's streaming in 4K, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's always Your compressed. It's always. And, if it, and, it, and it, it seems, you know, a little antiquated, like, oh, we're buying these things. I don't know. There's something a little comforting about get having the steel a nice. book. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. And you get like, a, you know, you got like a nice 100, 150 movie collection yeah. that you're like, people come over. Who knows? The yeah. weather's insane out there. We may be pushed inside for weeks <laughs> at a time in the future. We're yeah. gonna want movies to watch. And how yeah. great is it to look at someone's shelf and know who they I are? I know. I exactly. love the assessment. John Waters, great, greatest quote ever. This is books, not movies. But if you go to someone's house and they uh, don't have uh, a good, a well curated bookshelf, don't sleep with them. 
I agree with movies. That's true. That's real. I've got a bunch of Lego on my bookshelf. Your book, your books are all Twilight novels. That's but right. Really weird. Every language. But yeah, they're all in different languages. Some are just they just say Twilight yeah, yeah. crudely written in crayon. I buy. I as buy. If you've transcribed your. Yeah, own. I buy old books from the flea market, rip the covers off, and just put Twilight covers on them. What um, an evangelist. Well, that's it for our show today. We sure stuck it to the movie industry. Huh? Yeah, we, we love you, movie telling industry. Them how much we love them. We love you so much. Come back. Make sure to subscribe to us right here on YouTube and leave a comment with some of your horror stories at the movie theater. What what bad thing happened to you at the movies? Uh, if you want to catch these live, as well as our pre-show moments and chat Q and A, give us a follow on Twitch over at Break Room and R. Otherwise, we'll see you later this week. Thanks yes, so much. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.